Howdy, I'm Traders of Grey, and I'm going to be playing some Artisan Rogues. Very nasty free-to-play deck. So what, first off, what is Artisan? Artisan is a favorite, personal favorite format of mine that I love so very much whenever it comes around in Magic the Gathering Arena. Um, but Artisan is using only commons and uncommons and basic lands. There are no rares, zero gold cards. So, with that being said, and it's in standard, which is my personal favorite, because I don't, I'm new to Arena, so I don't have a very big magic collection. You're, you're not going to be seeing me play in Historic until... You know, I, I get a bigger collection. And so standard artisan, perfect. It just levels a playing field and just gets my creative mind, just the juices flowing, okay? So what I have here is a free-to-play artisan rogues. What qualifies it as being free-to-play? Some content creators will say it's free to play because it's got zero rares. And at some point when you're building up your collection and you're amassing cards, you do end up with a significant number of common and uncommons uh, that you can use to build any kind of uh, artisan deck. If that was something you wanted to do. Um, it is possible that this is free to play in that regards. Um, if you're a beginner though, I do advise that you check out my Discord channel. Um, the links are below. When you get to the Discord, go to the Magic the Gathering channel and look for the little thumbtack, which is where I put all my uh, end messages. From there, you're going to find a website that's stickied, uh, and that website's going to take you to a, a, a place that has all of these codes. So as a beginner to Arena, these codes are going to give you packs, packs are going to give you cards, and just opening them, you're going to have wild cards as well. And these wild cards you can use to make new cards. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with wild cards, you can check out my Magic the Gathering playlist on YouTube, and you'll find it from, from there as well. It's Magic 101. Uh, I talk about wild cards, how to use them, how to make them how to create cards in Arena. So you can check that out as well. But without further ado, let's check out Artisan Road. If you're wanting a black and blue deck, Demir, Bruiser, whatever generation you call black and blue, you're looking to play nasty. You like seeing your opponent concede after the Ruined Crab comes down and starts milling six cards right off the bat. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. It is nasty. And what's even nastier about this is it's zero rares. Zero rare. Let's start with the one drops. Merfolk Wind Robber. It's a 1-1 one -one creature flying. Um, but when it deals damage to an opponent, we get to mill a card. We can also draw a card by sacrificing it, but we can only do that if we have eight or more cards in our opponent's graveyard. So keep that in mind. The good old famous Ruin Crab. We all love it, and sometimes we don't love it. It's a one drop as well for zero three, but whenever we put a land down, it will mill three cards. And that also works with Evolving Wilds because you can put it down one time and then sacrifice Evolving Wilds, bringing in another land. So that is six cards you will be milling from your opponent. Blood Chief's Thirst. This is just uh, more removal for the deck. I use it for a very troublesome creature um, or Planeswalker by chance, but um, usually I just kind of use it for creatures uh, unless I know a Planeswalker is coming. Our two-drop column is Lofty Denial for the start. I personally love it in this deck. It's another way of saying no. <laughs> no. 
because of the counter spell uh, synergy, I think this adds a lot that we can use with this deck because you're typ typically going to have a flyer out with your Soaring Thought Thief or your Wind Robber. Uh, the only other land uh, creatures we have is our Crabs and of course our, our uh, Black Bloom Rogues. But uh, the, I find it useful in this deck and um, I'm sure you will as well. Drown and Lock, it's very versatile. It's flexible. We can either use it as a counter spell or we can remove another creature off the board. Gives us options. Soaring Thought Thief, this is probably your most important card in the deck just because it's a rogue and of course it has flash flying. It's a 1-3 and if the opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues get a plus one. And whenever we uh, one or more rogues we control attack, each opponent mills two more cards. You really do want to try to protect your Soaring Thought Thief, whether you're countering spells or removing bigger threats off the board. So do keep that in mind when you play this deck. Teferi's Tutelage. So when I was building this deck, it has two wing cons. And I love multiple choice wing cons because if you're building a deck for only one and it gets countered hard, well then, you know, GG, off to the next game. But with this deck, you will either win by slapping your opponent's face with enough rogues or beat down, or you're just going to straight up mill them. And then there's option C. You will cre create so much frustration that they will just concede. Again, we're playing a nasty deck. <laughs> so Teferi's a tutelage. Whenever this enters the battlefield, we will draw a card, then discard a card. And whenever you, I draw a card, the target opponent mills two cards. And that will go very well with our Into the Story as well. Didn't say please. I have three of these in the deck. It's another hard counter, plus it mills uh, their deck as well. Black Bloom Rogues. I have this for two reasons. One, we have 21 lands here. Okay, that's 13, 17. Yeah, 21. I can do math. <laughs> so we have this for two reasons. One, she is a very beefy rogue as a 5-3 with menace when the opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. It's a big threat on the board. But at the same time, you know how the shuffler tends to get, right? You know, the shuffler can sometimes give you too much land, not enough land. She She's in there for fixing as well. So that's the second point. Lull Mage's Domination. Let me tell you a helpful hint. A player tip for Arena. Let's say there is a Torbren on the board. And I'm trying to get control of the Torbran. The Torbran has a three red mana and one colorless. So a total of four. A total of four to be able to cast it. So with this sorcery spell, it costs three less to cast for X if it targets a creature whose controller has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Gain control of target creature with mana value X. So the biggest player tip I can give you for Arena is because Arena doesn't operate like our brains do. I know if my opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard that that Torbran is going to be three blue plus one, right? Because it's going to be three less. You know, four is the total for Torbran. Three less is going to make it one. So when you're sitting there getting ready to cast this spell, do not put X equals one because you're you're telling the arena to look for something that took one to cast or less and it's not going to find the Torbran. You do have to say that X equals four, no matter what. So you have to pay, you have to pay your three blue and X equals four. Okay, you with me? Then after you do that, it's going to calculate, 
okay, the opponent has this many cards in their graveyard. It's actually three blue plus one. And it will either, if you have it auto pay, it will take the three blue plus the one extra. So keep that in mind when you're trying to play this card, because when I was trying it, I was like, why aren't you working? And I would end up roping because I couldn't figure it out. And then I just realized I have to tell it, I have to force it to say X equals four for it to look. And then it does the math automatically. There you go. The last card in our deck, of course, is Into the Story. It draws cards for us. It's gonna draw four, and it costs three less a cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard. So this just keeps digging for answers um, for you to be able to play. Or if you got some tutelages down, it's gonna also mill a lot of cards as well. Going to our land drops, I have four Dismal Backwaters. It's for land fixing, okay? The, the gain life is neato as well. It's a little slow, as so, and so is the Evolving Wilds, but the Evolving Wilds go really well with the Ruin Crab. Don't let the little gold, little star, comment, whatever, get you. It is not a rare card. Um, I personally bought the Bob Ross Secret Layer because I, I, I like Bob Ross, and I'm an 80s kid, and... I had to have the lands as well because I thought the art was amazing. That's another draw for me for Magic the Gathering is the art. And of course I had to have it. So what other way to make this deck more trolly than throwing all Bob Ross lands? Except for the Dismal Backwaters. Obviously there was no Bob Ross Dismal Backwaters, but I do have five swamps and eight islands. I hope you love this deck as much as I do. It's Artisan Rogues. Let me know how it fares for you in the comments below. And let me know if any of your opponents can see it as well. <laughs> Enjoy the three games I got for you here uh, as I played some earlier and I figured I'd just put this together. And there you go. Also, not to forget, if you want to catch me on Twitch, I do stream there live during the week and on the weekends you can catch me at the links below you can find me there and uh some of the stuff i stream there doesn't always end up on youtube so check me out say hi i'll see you in the next artisan robes here we go <laughs> oh baby oh baby I should I should be ashy on it. Should be, right? Okay. Turn one rune crab. Turn two opponent concedes. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I know it's really nasty. It really really is. All right. Well, this unfortunately comes in tapped. But we get to see what kind of deck uh, they're playing. Get a flyer out. That's in the turn. Unfortunately, I do have some behind me that you might be able to see just a little bit. We're still having renovations done in our apartment, unfortunately, because of the whole Texas freeze damage. So, the Spite Dragon can definitely be a nuisance. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, I could always get rid of it later. I could just pass a turn, actually. I think that's what we're going to do. We didn't get any land, which sucks. I could either flash in a rogue, or I could counter something. But it depends on what he does. The 
riddle form, no. We are going to get rid of the riddle. I'll take the two. Can I get some land? Can I get some land? Pretty please. Got another instant, it looks like, in the arsenal. I did not get land. Ow. Hmm. Well, we're just going to have to be defensive. Uh, no attacks right now. In the turn. I do have another denial. Crash through. Certainly. But I'm gonna let that fly. I'm just gonna kill it on it. No blocks. Pass. Flash you in. Got an instant. Goes the denial. So now we can easily get rid of this Sprite Dragon. No more Sprite Dragon being boosted. I will take it. No block. Winged words. Fine. Okay. okay. We got... We got things we could do here. I need to keep them from being able to play anything. Unfortunately, and I can still keep taking a little bit of damage. But don't have any land. Really surprising that I'm getting screwed on the shuffler right now. Drown in the lock, right? There's some land. Running a lot, creature. Followed by a lofty denial on your lofty denial. What card do you mind not having? Because <laughs> this wind robber is going to come take a card. It's not something you want. Opt. Guy's got a good deck. I like the red and blue. I really do. But sure. Nothing I can do about it. 
fail. It is land. I think I'd rather hold it. There's something they could have played. Hopefully this is juicy, whatever they cast. Spike field hazard. Am I okay with losing this? I think I am. I think I don't... I think I'd rather just not them... Um... Okay. Alrighty. Yes, please. I'll take another blue source. Oh, another Sprite Dragon down the train. We have some counters. Damn. <laughs> yeah! Artists and bro. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a nasty deck. It's a nasty deck. Okay, I got 20 gems out of it. Let's do another. Artists and rogues. Vega, 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 Malika, Vega, Malika. Yeah. Oh, Rune Crab. Why? Well, I, I've never been this lucky playing my own rogue deck. Yes, please. Brazil! Oh, wow. I love this opponent. I love this opponent. Why? Because my wife is Brazilian. So, I love them. I love them a lot already. Um, I do want to be able to counter something. So, we're just going to play that. Okay. No attacks. Um, yeah, I like that. That's perfect. just take there oh okay all right no attacks now we don't have any flyers so we have to be kind of careful what they do i mean we could tap them out but unfortunately we just don't have any now that i could do hmm I think I'd rather go big. I'd rather not bigger things. Well, you're gonna come down as land. Oh, straight up robbed them from land there. Holy moly. Um. I'll play you, that way I still have... That way I have a flyer, and I can do some better shenanigans. Okay, so I'll take the one. Sorry for the chime. <laughs> okay, we have a counter. We need some pressure on the board, uh, unfortunately. We need some pressure. This is pretty good pressure, but it leaves them open to cast some. 
But it's good pressure. No attacks. So now they can cast something juicy here to punish me. Or that a little premature. They still had a good board state. Maybe they just had nothing but land. We'll never know. But I'll take it! Can we get one more game just for the hell of it? Because we're a nasty deck. <laughs> a pizza order is on the way. So, I may go side here because we're just down the road from pizza guy. <laughs> I may go get our pizza and come right back. Rune crap, rune crap, rune crap. <laughs> but unfortunately, we're going to have to play this all in one right off the bat. Yeah. Playing some uh, kind of auras. Before you start popping off, even got here. Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> All right, artisan rogues. Hope y'all enjoyed it just as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs>